to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, we have a lot to unpack in today's video, including a deluge of rain and snow across the West Coast now through early next week, fast-moving storms with rain, snow, and severe weather across the eastern two-thirds of the country going through this weekend and early next week, and then a major northeast snowstorm, possibly including the I-95 corridor across the northeast, getting through the middle of next week. Again, if you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel. I cover Canada, the United States, and the tropics during tropical weather season, and I would love to hit 30,000 subscribers by the end of this month, and also hit the like button. Button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. And I would also love to get over a thousand likes again to on today's video. So I definitely appreciate all the likes out there. But we have 10 days until spring equinox of 2023. So that means we have daylight savings time this weekend. So if you have not yet already, get ready to spring forward one hour going into Sunday morning at 2 a.m. That is daylight savings time. And that's when we'll be springing forward. But over the past 72 hours for our snowfall accumulation, we're actually seeing some decent snow snows up here across the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and the Pacific Northwest, seeing those higher elevation snows over the past 72 hours. But then we've seen a lot of rain over the past seven days, not only across the West Coast with our big system, but we also have seen a lot of rain here from Northeast Texas, Eastern Oklahoma, on up through Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, getting in toward the Ohio Valley here into Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio over the past seven days. But as we go through today, we're going to take a break from some of the heavy rain out here from northeast Texas to much of Ohio as we see our uh, next two systems move across the country. The first system is bringing some snow across the Great Lakes and the Mid-Atlantic going through today with rainfall farther south toward Florida, Georgia, and the coastline regions of the east coast. And then our bigger system off to the west is producing lots of higher elevation snow in the Pacific Northwest and flooding rains with a serious flash flooding threat into California going through today into our Saturday. So looking first out west, we got a lot of snow alerts. We got these purple shaded colors of winter weather advisories. The pink shaded colors are winter storm warnings for very heavy snow, including the Sierra Nevadas here. And then flood watch is in the green here into coastal uh, portions of California into central and northern California including the Sacramento Valley out here and that is a concern moving forward because we do have those precipitable water anomalies today in those darker green and blue shaded colors which are three to four standard deviations above climatology and that actually looks to continue going into the day on Saturday, March 11th. You still see those greens down here with at least two to near two and a half um, inches above climatology here for precipitation and those water anomalies across the West Coast going into this weekend. So what does that mean in translation to precipitation? Well, we do see we have higher elevation snows up here across the Pacific Northwest here, and then farther south, it's all rain for most part here in central portions of California, including the Sacramento Valley at noon today, the coastline there of California here from San Francisco down towards Santa Barbara, we're definitely going to be seeing some extremely heavy rain, but as you go up in elevation there into the Sierra Nevadas, very high up, we're definitely going to be seeing some extremely heavy snowfall rates, probably over two or three inches per hour, and that does continue through this evening. We'll start to see more of this higher elevation snow spread eastward toward the north central Rocky states, and then as we go into Saturday morning and toward the midday hours around noon time frame, We'll start to ease away at the precipitation slowly but surely across California, but we're still going to be seeing some rain and snow at times across the Sierra Nevadas, and that actually continues through Sunday morning, but that actually moves farther north. So places here like Portland, Oregon, Eugene, and Medford, Oregon, and towards portions of northwestern and northern California, we'll start to see more rain and snow going into Sunday morning at 6 a.m. So looking at the additional rainfall accumulation up here across the Pacific Northwest now through Sunday here on uh, late this weekend through March 12th. This is additional rainfall on top of what we've already seen 
And it does look like an additional one to three, even four inches worth of rain, especially as you get down here into northern and northwestern California. But we still see those one to two inch amounts up here into Portland, Eugene and Medford, Oregon, and even farther north towards Seattle. We still could be seeing a half an inch to an inch of rain through Sunday. But then farther south, again, California is going to get absolutely slammed by heavy rainfall here across the um, the coastline here and even higher up into the Sierra Nevadas as well, we're going to be seeing some rain and also lots of snow melt. So lots of flooding going on, widespread two to four inches of rain, even higher amounts than that, possibly up to six, seven inches of rain in some of those higher elevations through Sunday. And that's why the Weather Prediction Center has forecasted a moderate to even a high risk, yes, a rare high risk for flash flooding today into tomorrow on Saturday, not only for coastal portions of uh, California here, but even as you go up in elevation into the Sierra Nevadas in combination with the snow melt and the very heavy rain and snow, we're definitely going to be seeing a big mess out here into California. And just to get your understanding of what this means, a high risk for flash flooding means widespread flash flooding is expected. And areas that don't normally experience flash flooding could, and lives and property are in great danger as well with a high risk of flash flooding. So it is pretty rare. And just to put this into perspective for you guys, when the Weather Prediction Center forecasts high risk days for flash flooding, they are a big deal. And high risks are only issued by the Weather Prediction Center only 4% of days when they do issue their excessive rainfall outlooks. Two-fifths of all flood-related fatalities actually do occur in high-risk flash flooding days, and four-fifths of all flood-related damages to property are occurring during high-risk excessive rainfall outlook days as well. So definitely putting that into perspective for you and looking at climatology going all the way back to 2016 for those high-risk days of flash flooding. They do occur most, uh, mostly down here across the southern and southeastern United States, but they have also happened across parts of California from time to time going over the past few years. So they do happen, but they are still very rare, especially up here where we have them now. It's pretty unprecedented just about here across central California toward the Sacramento Valley. But then we're looking at the snowfall accumulation. This is additional snow of what we, on top of what we've already seen through Sunday, March 12th. You definitely see one to two feet of snow up here in a lot of the higher elevations of the Pacific Northwest, including portions of Western Oregon, getting through central Idaho here, Western Montana, Western Wyoming, and getting up into Northeastern Utah near the Salt Lake City area. And then farther south, yes, we're talking 40, 50, if not 60 more inches worth of snow additionally on top of what we've already seen here across those very high elevations of the Sierra Nevadas here. Um, that goes all the way through Sunday, March 12th as well. But then farther to the north and east, we got another snow system that we're watching. That's what producing some winter weather advisories and even winter storm warnings here in the pink shade of colors across the Midwest. And that continues through the portions of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. So again, with these winter weather advisories from Detroit down here through Buffalo, New York, portions just to the north and east of Pittsburgh and getting even over here into north northern portions of New Jersey, southern New York toward New York City and even into western portions of Connecticut as we go through the next couple of days. So as we go through the noon hour today, we're going to start to move the snow a bit farther to the east. We're still going to see some snow showers across Detroit, Toronto, and then over here in towards portions of Lake Erie by noon time frame. And then that will continue to move to the east in places like Buffalo, New York, getting just north and east of Pittsburgh. We're definitely going to be seeing some snow flying around by noon time frame. But then looking farther south, we got the warmer temperatures above freezing. Temperatures will be in the upper 30s to low 40s by 6 o'clock this evening on Friday. So that means all these areas farther south across much of New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, you guys are all going to see liquid precipitation. It's going to be rainfall. And then again, the colder temperatures up here in the central and western New York State, northern and northeastern Pennsylvania, 
It will be cold enough, but still seeing those wet snowflakes through 6 o'clock this evening. And then again, going into 6 a.m. on Saturday, tomorrow, March 11th, we're going to see those temperatures ever so slightly cooling off toward the freezing mark here in the northern New Jersey, southern New York State, and eastern portions of Pennsylvania. And that is where we're going to start to introduce at least a few snow showers or a rain-snow mix there along the I-95 corridor from Boston down through New York City and even into northern New Jersey as well by the time we get into 6 a.m. on Saturday. But by the time we get into Saturday evening at 6 o'clock, that system is all the way off the coast here, and we're going to say goodbye to the precipitation across the Northeast for this weekend as we go through Saturday night. So looking at additional snowfall accumulation across the Midwest now through Sunday, March 12th, on top of what we've already seen, another one to two inches possible across portions of far eastern Wisconsin, right along the Lake Michigan shoreline, and then across the state of Michigan toward Detroit, an additional four to seven inches possible there. Northeastern uh, Indiana, northern portions of Idaho toward the Toledo region, Fort Wayne, additional two to four inches of snow for you as we head through Sunday morning, and then farther east, areas here of three to six inches or more are likely across portions in north central Pennsylvania here just to the northeast of Pittsburgh here up toward Oil City, Pennsylvania portions of Buffalo, New York and then stretching farther east toward New York City we could potentially see maybe a couple inches of snow for you as we head through Sunday morning. But then as we go through the day on Friday, we got another system, again, waiting in the wings up here across the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be moving up and over top of the United States into southern Canada uh, as we head into this afternoon and evening. And then by the time we get in towards Saturday, March 11th, tomorrow, all this energy will be up here toward the Dakotas, southern Saskatchewan, southern Manitoba, and eastern portions of Montana. And then that will start to dive to the southeast across the western Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley. Valley early next week on Monday, March 13th. And what this will do is provide us with lots of snowfall across the Pacific Northwest through the noon time frame here today. And then that will move farther east. So the Dakotas here into portions of western Minnesota, southern Saskatchewan, Alberta, and even southwestern Manitoba up here in Canada will start to see some moderate snowfall through 6 a.m. on Saturday. That snowfall will be diving to the southeast. Again, a lot of these same areas that have seen snow here this weekend and late this week are already going to start to see more snow through Saturday evening. So again, La Crosse, down toward Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, Des Moines, Iowa, the Twin Cities, Chicago, Illinois, you guys will be getting more snow Saturday evening. That will push farther to the east across the Great Lakes here as we head into Sunday afternoon, again stretching from the Arrowhead of Minnesota all the way down through northern Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and portions of the Mid-Atlantic going through early on Sunday afternoon. So looking at the total snowfall key accumulation from this second system from Saturday night through Sunday morning, we're definitely going to be piling up again another three to perhaps six, seven inches of snow up here into southeastern Saskatchewan, southern Manitoba, and especially up here in northeastern uh, North Dakota, getting into western Minnesota, a good two to five inches of snow there. Near the Twin Cities, we could see about three inches of snow from this event. And then farther south and east, Chicago, maybe one to two inches there. Green Bay to Milwaukee, one to two inches. Madison, Wisconsin, over there toward La Crosse, Wisconsin, we could be seeing one to three inches. And then one to three inches back here across the Des Moines, Iowa area through this weekend. And then farther to the East, it's going to be losing its steam a little bit by Sunday and losing its moisture source. So we're going to start to see more lighter accumulation, but still one to three inches out here across central PA down in towards West Virginia and northern portions of Virginia and maybe even central New York State getting in through Sunday night and into Monday morning early next week. We also have to talk about the severe weather side of the system. On Saturday, March 11th, the Storm Prediction Center has a marginal to slight risk, a level one and two of five on the scale, especially especially across eastern Oklahoma into central Arkansas toward the Little Rock region and eastern side of the Oklahoma City metro area. And this is mainly, again, for a 60 mile per hour winds, some quarter to half dollar size hail, and perhaps maybe a couple of brief tornadoes, especially across southeastern Oklahoma, northeast Texas, and southwestern Arkansas going through the evening here this uh, on Saturday evening. And the reason why we see that, we have a nose of the nose of moisture moving up here across the southern plains toward the Red River. Dew points will be rising into the 50s and 60s out here toward the DFW metroplex. Toward 
toward southeastern Oklahoma Saturday afternoon and evening. But we do have a cap on the atmosphere. So as you go up in elevation in the atmosphere, you do see the warm layer aloft is actually pretty strong up there. So we're not going to see a lot of initiation here through the day on Saturday. A lot of these thunderstorms will actually be firing up after dark. So this will be an after dark overnight type of severe weather threat. So you see here at three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, we have that cold front dropping south. And again, nothing much happening. Again, some warm air advection type of light rain showers, sprinkles here. That's about it. But as we get through 9 p.m. through mid evening on Saturday here tomorrow, we definitely will start to see initiation of at least isolated or widely scattered supercells. These could be tornadic. They could be producing 60 mile per hour winds and also some quarter to perhaps half dollar size hail as they break through that cap. And then as we see that pushing to the southeast, this will turn more into a damaging wind and hail threat and then a heavy rain threat as it pushes across portions of Arkansas, northern Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama through 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. Then as we head into Sunday, March 12th, another slight risk for severe weather, this time including Jackson, Mississippi, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and on southward there, and then getting into southwestern Georgia. Georgia there in northwestern Florida Panhandle on Sunday. And again, the same thing holds true. A broken line of some supercells by late afternoon on Sunday. We'll see maybe a more organized line of storms after dark as we head through Sunday night. Damaging winds to 60 miles per hour, some quarter to half dollar size hail, and maybe a brief spin up tornado Sunday evening. And then again, that line of storms will be pushing farther south towards Savannah, Georgia, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, South Carolina, and then perhaps as far south as the Jacksonville and even Tallahassee regions in Florida by 7 a.m. on Monday to start the work week next week. So definitely want to watch out for the stronger thunderstorms there. They will be producing lots of heavy rain. So Sunday into Monday, we are going to be seeing some one to two inch rainfall amounts across the Carolinas, eastern Tennessee, down here across portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and maybe even portions of northern Florida seeing over a half an inch of rain into early next week. And that does cause concern for some flash flooding with a marginal risk of flash flooding across Alabama, Georgia, and much of the southeast going through that Sunday and Monday time frame. But now we got to talk about the northeast snowstorm getting in through the early and middle portion of next week. There are a little bit more agreement now on the models of a major snowstorm across the northeast. You see the European model deepening that low pressure system near or right off the coast by Tuesday, March 14th. And the same thing holds true with the GFS, just not as strong with the GFS. And the GFS is still a little bit more progressive with this system and moves it out a lot faster than the European model. So you will see that on, reflected on the snowfall amounts. The European model hangs this low pressure around longer, so we see heavier snow farther south. So New York City, Long Island, up here toward Boston, including the I-95 corridor on the European model, it shows a good foot of snow possible here, maybe higher amounts as well. The GFS model is a little bit more progressive and faster with this low pressure system as it pushes along the coast there. Um, so it has the higher totals a little bit farther north and east. So again, this has a missing New York City city and Long Island and even some heavier snow still up toward Boston, Vermont, New Hampshire and Western Maine. So there's still some differences in the timing and also the track of this and the speed of the system is going to be a big deal for amounts on this. So we'll continue to watch that. But now we look over at the Canadian guidance to see what we have here for um, agreements within that as well. And you do see it actually has it closer to what the European model does show. So I do think the system is going to move slower. I think the GFS is too fast. So I think we're going to be seeing some possibly up to two feet of snow in some of these areas, I think, in the northeast as we get towards the middle of next week. But where that sets up, whether it's the I-95 corridor or farther north, is yet to be seen. So we'll wait and see on that. And again, it all has to do with this track. If the low pressure system moves along the coastline here, it's going to be just across the interior part of New England that we've seen all winter long with the heavy snow. But if this low pressure system moves far enough off the coast, then all that heavier snow will move farther south towards the I-95 corridor, and that will include Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, and New York City, and even northern and central New Jersey going through the middle of next week. So look, looking at the pr potential precipitation types during next week, I think the heavy snow will be setting up across a good majority of the northeast. I think Boston, you're a safe bet to see heavy snow. It's a little questionable right now for New York City and Long Island. I think you're right on the 
line between rain and snow, but again, we will be watching that very closely, and I think heavy rain farther south across especially eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, and along portions of Delaware and Maryland there on the coastline as well through the middle of next week. But longer range, it does look colder going through that Feb uh, March 17th through Thursday, March 23rd time frame with below normal temperatures across much of the lower 48. So if you want a vacation spot for warmer temperatures, Go down here towards Tampa, Orlando, or even Miami, Florida. You'll definitely see above normal temperatures there. And then again, an active subtropical jet will be feeding in moisture from the Pacific Ocean. So lots of active weather across the southwest and the west coast again. And the southeastern United States and possibly another nor'easter setup as we get into the third week into March. So definitely going to be watching that longer range. So my weather forecast recap for you guys. Delay, a deluge of rain and snow across the west coast now through early next week. Definitely have to watch out for flooding concerns and stay safe out there, guys. Definitely be mindful of that. Uh, Fast-moving storms with rain, snow, and severe weather across the eastern two-thirds of the country going through this weekend and early next week. And then a major northeast snowstorm is looking likely, possibly even including the I-95 corridor with a couple feet of snow as we head in towards the middle of next week. Well, thank you guys for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below. Give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new. And hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Friday, everybody. A great weekend. And I will see you all in the next video.